Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 16 of our FTB Skies Let's Play. Today guys, or expert mode let's play that is. Today guys, I've done a bit of cleaning up. I moved our, what is this called? The builder thing, shape builders, what are these called? The field projectors. I moved them over here into this empty space that we used to ever create setup about. I figured I needed more room to expand on some machines I want to build, one specifically this episode. So I figured, why not take it out of the space? It doesn't really fit the build. Eventually we'll remove these guys too. We won't be using them and this will expand down this wall as well. Now to get in what I want to do today is the first thing is this fabrication matrix right here. Now this will allow us to make Iasnium, which will allow platinum, osmium and such, which will allow further mechanism usage. However, I want Iasnium first of all to make, oh, can I not click on it? Thank you. I want to use this to make a block of Iasnium, which will be used for the cultism ritual to make the merit crusher. Now this guy will sextuple our ores. So I want to start with that right away. And I have a decent amount of silver. I have turned these guys off now. I have 20,000 backlog gravel because these do backlog a bit. So once we get into applied energistics, or I guess I probably can do it with entangled blocks once I get them and I can just entangle this guy here, our sword controller, and then have those be used as smart shoots because like I said, the drawer controllers, these guys here, the controller extensions don't work with shoots. So eventually I can fix that with a bunch of the entangled blocks. However, right now, one smart shoot can't keep up with the speed of this gravel because if I let it go, I'll just let it go for a while. These guys will build up and the smart shoot just, it just can't keep up. Like it is keeping up with nickel, bauxite somewhat lead in silver or lead in tin here but the rest of them are just they're just filling up and it's not really going down so i'm just going to leave that off running for now i do have plenty of stuff built up and i have 1.8 thousand silver to crush this guy over here has just been crushing away at some silver i just keep throwing some in and i should have like 800 silver dust yeah i have 824 silver dust just sitting or 900 maybe I can't tell if that's eight or nine. It looks like an eight, but I just have a bunch of silver dust sitting in here. Yeah, it was eight. And well, I've just been letting this guy go because you need silver dust to make the ISDM. Now, to make a fabrication matrix, you need a very simple recipe here. It's not too bad. Just some LDPE sheets, a personal chest, which is the control circuit, which I thought I made, but I guess I didn't. I need another logic circuit. Maybe I have one already sitting in the crystal, uh, the mineral resin over here. I might. Yes, I do. I'll just replace it with that guy for now. And I need to grab some LDPE sheets from below. Is that why? I, do I have them made up? No, I don't. It is just duroplast and polyethylene, right? I always forget. But these guys aren't used very often. It is plastic and... Right. Okay. Well, I'll go make some more LDPE sheets. I don't need 12, but I might have more, more than one fabrication matrix later in the future, that is. So for now, I'll just chuck that in my... This one? Yes. No. This one. Ah, there we go. I had the LDPE sheets already. I knew I made a bunch last episode, or two episodes ago. I'm not entirely sure, but I did make them. However, we can go ahead and make ourselves a personalized chest. Very simple. And I did make some more fluxed electrum, or energized electrum, by the way. And I did upgrade our advanced energizer. So I do have some of this pre-made up for this episode. However, we will probably need some more in the future. But for now, that's fine. What am I missing? Oh, just a fluid tank. Easy enough. Get one of those. And to use these guys, it is not as simple as making just the machine in place on the ground. You actually need this entire structure. So we have to make each one of these, and which isn't too bad in the end. However, this guy here, the energizer, requires dash plates, dash blocks, a mana lapis block, and three overcharged diamonds. So the overcharged diamond is just an infused diamond in an energizer. Infused diamond is just dimensional shards around a diamond. So that's not too bad. How many dimensional shards do I have? I only have three left. Okay. So it turns out I'm going to have to throw my dash infused mesh <laughs> over on top of my endstone. And then we will get more infused meshes soon. But for now, we'll do it this way. And I'll take the diamonds and dimensional meshes. And you know what? You can go like that. And we'll throw the ender pearl here, I guess. Why not? Not too big of a deal. And those should fill up into here. 
However, I do need upgrades on those like immediately because that will overflow of ender pearls. I guess I could put a void upgrade. I don't need the ender pearls. Let's be honest. We'll just take a void upgrade on there. I have plenty of enough ender pearls coming from a mob farm anyways. We'll just void those off and then the dimensional shards are nice. So we'll grab three of these. And since I did upgrade this, and once again, you can upgrade it a third time with infused diamonds, which I will. But for now, I just need the three overcharged diamonds to do this. And this guy's working at 2048 with 400 RF a tick. So those shouldn't take too long. But in the meantime, while those are going, what I want to do is get the rest of the stuff for the Energizer. So Mana Lapis is simply a block of Lapis in a Mana Pool. Not too hard. I want Lapis, not Mana. Simple as that. We got our Mana Lapis block. Kind of looks like wool almost. Chuck that in there. Now I need eight of these. And now I need four dash plates in a dash block. So a dash plate is actually until you get a better recipe for one to one with the implosion compressor. So until you can actually get a one to one recipe with the implosion compressor with TNT, which seems pretty easy because the implosion compressor simply needs a pressure chamber wall, force plates, and an advanced control circuit. And this you can make pretty easily once you hit the fabrication matrix. However, the one downside to that is you can't make the TNT itself. Where's the recipe? What was I looking at? I was looking at Dash. So is this guy. So you can't actually make TNT until you get gelled toluene. And gelled toluene comes from, well, toluene in a blast chiller. And toluene itself is a byproduct of forced infused oil, which means what we're doing with the bow diesel right now, you enforce oil with it instead. And while oil is a whole thing, you have to actually get crude oil from space or bee combs. And at the moment, well, we just don't have that option. Well, we kind of do, but... We don't really have that option if it, it's easier, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. However, for dash plates, currently we need a full block of dash, which means we will need 9, 18, 36. We'll need 45 dash blocks, which means we need 45 ore. And if you remember, we only have seven. So we're going to head back to space. I'm going to throw on my helmet, which I threw in my system. We'll throw our helmet on. We'll get our moon pouch out and... We'll go mining. I found cheese right away, but that's not really what I want. But I'll grab it while I'm here. I want a dash. Now, I'm not sure how much I'm going to find right off bat in this mine itself. However, once I have enough, we'll be back on our base, I guess. <laughs> and that there should be the last dash I need. Now, I did grab 43. Well, actually 45 here in a second. But I did grab the amount of ore I needed as dust exactly without remembering exactly that I have a crusher, which will triple this. However, I will need a bunch more dash in the future, and I'm only going to give the exact amount to our crusher for now, because once we get our merit crusher, we'll be able to double our current double, right? And I did find this big cave, so it didn't take very long. I just kept running around in mining little pockets of dash all around the walls. So, not too bad. I can head back to our village. Why our village? Our base. <laughs> And I've been eating this uh, plate of stuffed hoglin we got from the nether villages. It is perfect for vein mining large sections at a time. It just, I don't know, it stays for a long time. It's nice. But back at our base, I can go chuck all of this in here. Don't need any of that. And I only need 45, so I'll give him. And since I only need 45, I'm only going to give him 15 dash. And I'll let him work away. And for now, what I'll do is I'll jump down here. Oh, and by the way, I have set up flight around my entire base. So I can't make fun of myself when I fall out of the sky and die going splat because I have added two more flight rituals, which now because I have the diamonds infinitely, which I had before to make them, but I have added a tablet flight right here with a relay. And I also just added one right beside our mob farm, which is producing us our source. And I just have a tablet flight there. So this area will be covered in flight. And this area over here will be covered in flight. I'll never run out if you see over here. 56, 55, 54, and it'll, it'll refresh back to 59. And down here, I've just been adding force gems on the low as well. But I'm distracting myself. Back to my dash. So how much dash do I have? May as well start processing it in our arc furnace over here because it is going to take a while. However, these should be backed up full of energy. Yep, 2.45 million. So I can probably throw five in there and get away with it. I don't actually know how much this uses. I wish it told you how much RF it used. Oh, it does. It uses 2048 for 30 seconds. Interesting. Okay, well, that is holding up pretty well. I'm not going to lie. But what if I put another one in? Will it hold up? No, it will not. 
Okay, so I'm going to grab a hopper. We'll be back once those are done. In the meantime, what I'll do is I will make everything else here. So it's just some steel plating, which is very easy to make. Uh, vibrant quartz glass, which is just glass surrounded by glowstone. And then the fluid tanks are just copper around some barrels. So I'll get everything else set up for this. And in the meantime, we'll wait for the energizer to be built. Or sorry, all the dash to finish. And then we can get our fabrication matrix up and running. And that should be everything we need. This here is finished up. I made four extra apparently. However, if I come over here, we should be able to make the energizer. Wait, I need to make them depress versus first. So I need five blocks. And that should be everything we need to make our spin. I just got to come over here and make four of these into plates. And slowly but surely this year it will fill up and actually work. It does take a lot of power and plus they don't have any augments in this guy. So it does take a bit longer than needed. Our overcharged diamonds should be done. Correct. This guy. Perfect. Our overcharged diamonds are done. And then we'll just wait for the multi-server press to finish. And we'll be able to make our fabrication matrix. With that done, I can go ahead and make our energizer, and that is everything we need to make the fabrication matrix. Now, this guy is in the schematic cannon, I believe. However, I'm going to trust myself that I do know how to build this. So we're going to do that there. I'm going to do steel players, pillars up the side, like so. I love the sound they make when they get placed on fluid tanks up the side like this. We'll do the energizer in the bottom. We'll do mechanical mixer in the top. And then we'll do quartz glass front and back like so. And without any mistakes, this should be correct. It does seem fine. However, we'll know if I can actually craft anything once it's done. However, this guy does need both an input of a fluid, input of an item, and input of power. Now, you may be confused how you can automate this early because the only way to input stuff is into the fabrication matrix block itself. You can't input fluids into these fluid tanks. You might think you can, but you can't. However, luckily, this energizer right here is able to power the back of the fabrication matrix itself, and it itself has a 2 million FE buffer, which is nice. So if you power the energizer, and to put a say a fluid input in the bottom and an item input in the front you can somewhat fully automate the fabrication matrix the only thing you can't do at the moment is an output now in the future you can easily automate this with either entangled blocks or using uh what are they called modular routers i almost had to look it up but then it finally came to me so yeah you can either automate this with modular routers in the future or entangled blocks I'll be using entangled blocks just because I love entangled blocks. However, I have put this right beside our force tank because you do need force fluid to have these working. So we'll do the force fluid underneath. I'll do power in from the bottom, I guess, probably with these guys here. I'll make myself some more elite universal cables and I'll just power this from the bottom as those will probably be what we use to power most of the base at the moment. And then through the front here, I will do item input of just a silver dust with a barrel for now, just pumping into the front. And this will be a full automation, well, semi-full automation of the fabrication matrix to start off. So I'm just gonna get that set up real quick and we'll be back once we can make, well, silver or ISDM, I guess. So I somehow died twice while setting this up by running into this wire, which isn't that surprising, but it happened twice, which is sad. <laughs> I feel like I would have learned my mistake the first time, but I didn't. However, as you see, I'm in the, just in the middle of setting these up. And also, I do want to run the wire this way instead, so I could have to destroy this. But I did get the force fluid hooked up, and I'll be back once the rest of this is done. <laughs> okay, I've gone ahead and put 1,300 silver in my inventory. That should slowly fill this guy up, and it will use power. Now, this guy does take a while to fill up with power. It is not the fastest, and it does require 100 FE per operation. So... Our SDM production will be very, very slow. However, this will eventually fill up with 100 FE, 100,000 FE, and then it will process. Now, the reason this is very slow is because the energizer itself only has such a maximum, I guess, output or throughput of energy, and so does the fabrication matrix itself. So it doesn't accept power very fast, which I think is a flaw in the design of the block itself from the mod pack developers i think you should be able to force a bunch of power into it considering the power cost of the machine as well as how much you need to actually use it to make isnium but i digress i think it works fine i think it is to force you to make several fabrication matrices to upscale production to a large point i guess however 
I guess you can make osmium through combs eventually, I believe. Yeah, there's an osmium bee. So eventually you can make osmium through bees. Unless this guy, yeah, this guy makes an osmium comb. Perfect. So yeah, eventually this will, you could do it this way. But this also does require a fabrication matrix to work. So I'm not entirely sure what their thought process is here. However, fabrication matrix, I guess we'll need a plenty of them in the future. Now, speaking of bees, there is something I really want to do today, and that is to make perfect bees. Now, perfect bees might seem like a daunting task to undertake. However, in reality, perfect bees aren't that hard at all. So to get started, I'm going to get all of these bees here into little hives. I'm going to place them all around this room here. Shouldn't be too bad. However, if we grab ourselves a hive, if we have one, no, we only have upgrades to speed. So let's head down to the bee quest line, not the bees, and let's get started here. So the first thing we need is a beehive, which luckily you can make with sugar in this mode. So that is a nice change. We're going to need a few of these to house all of our bees. So we'll grab 16 for now. It's not too bad of a number. And that gives us our expanded hive. Now, what we do with these guys is you place oak beehive on the ground, like so. Then you place the expansion box on top. And now you have an expanded beehive, which you can upgrade. I'll show you what this looks like without the expansion box. There's no upgrades and it only has three slots. This guy has five slots for bees and it has four upgrade slots. Now we want to just put bees in here in general. So the easiest way to do that is just to grab yourself some bee cages, which you get from a bunch of like nether villages and such. We have six here. These six won't ever disappear, which is nice. So we don't have to worry. However, I do want to enclose these guys with a dandelion or a flower to start because I don't have simulator upgrades. And as far as I can tell, now this might be incorrect. However, as far as I can tell, bees won't produce, uh, like regular vanilla bees won't produce inside of a simulator upgrade. They need to actually leave the hive and use a flower. However, we're going to use the advanced hives as they have larger space and you don't have to manually harvest them or any nonsense like that. We'll grab ourselves a stack of bottles as well. And then I also want to grab some trap doors so they can't escape. We only have that many, so I'm going to make a bunch more. Why not? There, we'll grab ourselves some trap doors. So a very simple way to do this is simply enclose them in a space like so. So what I'm going to do is I'll throw all my bees in here. Oh, I guess you can't throw them in. Interesting. Okay, well, bees don't apparently like that cage. However, if I place them near the hive, you'll see they jump in. Surely this one goes in, maybe. That one went in. Come on, buddy. Why don't you want to go in? Join your friends. There we go. Well, we'll trap them in there. And as you see, this will base. This is what the setup will look like. We don't want to open the hives. I'll throw the bottles in there. And basically what will happen, these guys will pop out. They will harvest the flower, pop back in. This will collect honey. Honey balls will spit out here. Honey combs will spit out here. I can throw four speed upgrades in here, and that should help. And I get these from a quest as well. Speed upgrades, where are they? Right here. If we click on that, I got them from making... How did I get these? I guess I got them from a bastion. Interesting. And I do want to set up more of these hives. However, I do need to make some honeycombs, and then we'll get the rest of these bees all set up in hives. And we'll get all these guys working to make us a bunch of honeycombs and honey. Now, the reason I need so many honeycombs and honey is A, to make obviously the hives, but I also need to make honey treats. Now, these guys here, uh, do we have it here? We'll just use this. Honey treats themselves are how you give your bees genes to replicate or uh, like better genes. And that is simply honeycombs and honey blocks. And then with the treats, you can add gene genomes. So gene samples and you can get different traits, whether that be create a bee that produces diamonds and you put that with a young bee or an egg story and you get a diamond spawn egg, or you do it with a bee itself and you give them traits, whether that be whatever and so on and so forth. So you can make a bunch of spawn eggs with the incubation chamber and you can also make some other bees. However, that isn't something we can do today. As like I said, we're going to need a bunch of bees to do so. However, if this produces any or enough bees, we might be able to get to that next episode. However, I do want to set all this up just so we can start producing them. So we'll let our bees work and I'll do this as the episode progresses. I'll just fill this space out some more. So if we look at Fatma's incentivized interaction, this requires red chalk. Now, how do you get red chalk? You might ask. Well, it's probably very simple. Eh, not really. So you gotta get impure red chalk, which requires aphrod essence. 
Now, after essence, we will be able to make in a loot fabricator, so we won't ever have to do this ritual again. However, the first one you do actually need to spawn an unbound Afrit. Now, this guy's pretty easy to summon using nether cords, netherrack, gunpowder, and a flint and steel around an Afrit book. It'll summon this as long as well as some blazes, which isn't too bad. However, this requires Afrit's open conjure, which we haven't made yet. But this recipe here isn't too bad, so I'll go place this down. Oh my god, I almost died again. That is embarrassing. Okay, we will kill the last blaze, but that should be all good. And then I should be able to speed this guy up. And even at 16x speed, this still takes a decent amount of time. And I don't have my mob imprisonment tool on me. But our merit is successively spawned. I will need to do this ritual six more times to actually get all of our merits. We need to make the... Um, what is it called? The Afrit Essence Farm, because I will need Afrit for a few other things, I believe. Yeah, I'll need it for, oh, actually a lot. I will need a lot of Afrit Essence, like a lot, because I'm going to make thousands of, thousands of entangled blocks, ender tanks, and ender chests, which means I will need a bunch of Afrit Essence, which means I will need to kill six merits to complete a base data module. However, for now, I will say sayonara to this guy. We'll place him over there, take his silver out, because he won't be using the process anymore. Take this guy out. I will have to move this down a block, unfortunately, or up a block, I guess. We'll throw all the silver back into our machine, or sword system, I guess. And I will need another space in between. Otherwise, this guy will suffocate. So I'll take out, I don't know, another stone block. Why not? The other stone, and then we'll do hopper chest like so. Because yeah, if you don't move that up one, he will suffocate. And well, we don't want that, and, I should be able to just shift right click him on, and there we go. It kind of looks like he has a little hat. Kalendv Kalendvine. Kalendvine. I kind of like his name. But as you see, this guy, if we look at him, he is so much faster. Watch. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. Well, the timing's a little off. I don't know how to count, apparently. But that's besides the point. If we look at our silver dust, if I take it out, we're already at 676 again. If I take it out, six. If I take it again, another six, right? So this guy is going extremely fast and he is sex toppling our ores. So that is a very sweet deal. I'm going to take out a bunch more silver and then this will be enough ISDM or and to get us through the beginning part of the game at least. To actually stop distributing inputs from working because say if you're like me at this point in the game, you don't have enough power to fill this, right? Simply put. However, if I throw gold in here, gold can't be processed without an addition of silver ingots. So it acts as a nice buffer for item inputs. So therefore your item doesn't get split apart or anything because this will automatically split as it gets put into the hopper up here. So when I do it like this, it'll only go into this first slot here, which means I won't ever overuse my power. And then obviously the output on the bottom. 25 I has named dust. And what we got to do with this guy now is make it into two osmium and platinum. Now the way to go about doing this, if we go back to Mars, is you make platinum in a metallurgy confuser with diamonds. So basically we put five diamonds in per isdium and we get a platinum ingot. Now the platinum ingot itself will be used to make osmium in the, where is it? Oh, do you need platinum dust? Oh, you might need osmium dust. Ah, you need platinum dust, sorry. So the platinum dust in the central fugal separator will make platinum at a 75% chance, and it'll make osmium at a 15% chance. Now, as you see under here, it says boostable, and what we're going to do is we're going to boost it. So this guy here will give a secondary product a 15% chance bonus. So four of these guys will give an extra 60% to our osmium, and which means this machine will be so, so, so slow because there will be no speed upgrades or any hardened components or anything like that. So this guy will take centuries to complete. However, I do want the most osmium per isnium I can get, and per diamond I can get, I guess. So the way we're going to do it is with the auxiliary process C for now. And eventually we will get osmium bees and all the such. So that is not to worry, but for now, this is what we're going to have to do. And that should be the last of it. So there's our process sieves, our central fugal separator. To take those out of our machines from over here. And I have thrown an extra bit of diamond dust in our crafter. I will just throw this guy up here for now. Throw those in there. And I should be able to input directly from this guy here. If I auto input and then set this to 
eject and output there. Why don't you want to work? Eject items should go out the side, but it doesn't want to. Interesting. Eject. It doesn't recognize that as a container, I guess. Well, nevertheless, we'll move it over manually. It's not that big of a... Oh, you know why it needs to be dust? No wonder what an accept. I need a pulverizer in the middle. Duh. And we'll do input output like so. And that will actually get the platinum in it. And then this guy will have input as well. So now, very slowly, we will get our first osmium dust eventually. So this is technically now a 60% chance. And it is normally what? What is it normally? 50. So it is technically a 75% a chance we get osmium per platinum and a 75% chance we get platinum per platinum. So it will be completely refundable, if, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see if we get it the first try. Come on, first try. Okay, we hit zero on both of them. <laughs> and we got our first osmium, which is super nice. However, I do want to be able to filter these properly. So I'm going to stick platinum dust in here, whitelist that, and then we can set the auto output here. And this guy will auto input from the top as well. I do have a bunch of honeycombs and honey bottle, well, four honey bottles, but I do have the honeycombs we needed. So I can go ahead and make myself some more hives, which will be nice. And what we can do is hopefully get started on a bit of bees today. Not too many or a bit more bees than we already get started with. However, I will set up a few more hives and then we'll see what we can do for genome production. Here we go. Okay, all my bees are now trapped. I mean, completely humanely in their homes and these should start filling up with honeycombs and honey bottles and I can start making honey treats oh plenty. Now, to actually get the genes we want, we need to do a few things and luckily from the nether villages, you get a bunch of bees for free. Now these guys are actually super useful because we can plant them down and use them for our squishing needs. Now crystalline I will keep, blazing I will keep, Ghostly I will keep and glowing I will keep. Amethyst I don't think I can actually use for anything. Let me just look up the amethyst bee. Conversion. Oh, it does give me spring glide bees. Okay, and experience bee I know I can't use for anything. So those are going to be my testing dummies. So what I'm going to want is a fence post. A bunch of fence posts. Or sorry, I guess I want my leads back because I already have the fence posts I need. And I want to just place these guys down one by one. Oh, I have some bees under the base, don't I? Oh, I do. Four more bees for, you know, very humane usages, obviously. Nothing nothing but humane usage for my bees here. Only the best is what I give them. And I'll place down these experience bees one by one. And what these guys will allow me to do is simply connect weather tolerance and... What's the other one I want? Here, I'll, I'll put one down just to show you. I do need a cage. Just in case you've never done productive bees before this will be a help guide. But if I grab the sturdy bee cage, it says type, productivity, weather tolerance, behavior, endurance, and temper. So temper and endurance are two stats you do not need to worry about if you're using bees inside simulation chamber because they can never attack you because they're simulated and endurance is their health. So temper, they can be passive, which means they won't attack you even if you hurt them or something, but you don't need this because once again, simulated. Endurance is how much health they have. See, you have health 10 to 15 once again doesn't be worried about but behavior you want metaternal weather tolerance you want any and productivity you want very high so we'll go through and get all of these today however i do want to lead all of these guys out and this will allow me to farm both metaternal which means leaving them out during the day and night for several cycles that is it's not an exact amount some take more than one day some only take one cycle you will notice that if you go and collect them they will have uh different days like some will be metaternal while the others aren't and that is simply just the way the pack or productive bees work there is not an exact time however these guys will slowly farm out metaternal and weather tolerance now to have weather tolerance it obviously needs to rain and thunderstorm which will take a long time however if i remove move my weather rod here i should be able to get rain going again in my base and i believe i don't have any rods on this side yeah i only put a weather rod over here i believe yeah that shouldn't affect it but just in case i will take this rain shield away and i might have one over here as well yes i do just because the rain shields only reached so far i had to make some more but with the rain shields gone i should by all means be able to farm out weather tolerance any and as well as metaternal now now, to get 
very high productivity, you need a kamikaze bee. Now, when you look up kamikaze bee, you actually see the bee nest helmet. Now, this is actually how you get a bee nest. Now, you can trade this from a villager, or you can make one in a super cooler with honey, which is a very plausible way now that we have honey is to make one of these. However, another way to get honey, or sorry, a beehive, which is the vanilla method for getting the beehive, that is, is if I grab a birch tree and I grab myself some flowers of any kind. So I'll go with a poppy, grab some poppies, and we'll grab a bunch of bone meal. Now, this is the vanilla way of getting beehives. And it is very simple. You surround a tree with poppies. We'll go a bunch of poppies. It doesn't actually need to be this many. I believe it just needs to be one directly underneath. However, each time a tree grows or a birch tree, I think oak also works, but each time one grows within with a, tr a poppy or a flower underneath it, it has a chance of spawning a beehive. We did not get it. So we'll go again. Now I'm just going to do this for a while while I wait for my bees to produce like rain and all that stuff. So it's not that big of a deal. However, once I get myself a beehive, I'll come back to you. Eventually I will get a hive, no hive, and the cycle just continues until a hive spawns. And eventually we will get ourselves a beehive. Now, if I don't in within like, I don't know, a decent amount of time, like say one weather storm or one storm or something. Also, I really hate how the loopy makes everything magnetic. Oh, I do want that upgrade. Get me here. Get me here. There we go. That is a nice upgrade to get, I will say. Like I was saying, if I don't get one by the time, say a weather storm happens and I do get the maternal upgrade, I will just end up making one in the super cooler the way you're technically supposed to make one. Oh my goodness, we got a bee nest. Wait, I didn't even realize. I was just still making trees. I literally just planted a tree down, broke it, and I was about to plant another one. And I just looked up because this bee was bothering me. And I heard a noise. And it's because the bee was trying to... It, it wasn't this bee that's bothering me. It was this guy over here. But he popped out of this nest. So we got ourselves our bee nest, which is super great. We do have some extra bees, which might make their way into these hives over here eventually. But with this, we can make ourselves the kamikaze helmet throw this gargantuan mess of a helmet on. It seems they have removed the catcher from the pack for some reason. Not entirely sure why. Not sure what that does for them. However, the catcher is not in the pack, so this is going to be very painful to do. What I will do is I will grab a mob imprisonment tool and I will just catch a mob from our farm. A skeleton preferably. It's probably the best so we can do it from range and not have the kamikaze bee dive in. Oh, we lost the skeleton chance. Any skeletons? Nope. You know what? A slime's actually probably pretty good too. They have a lot of HP. So I'll grab a slime down and hopefully we get a chance of getting a B. Oh, there's one. Oh, they're so fast. There's another one. Come on, catch it, catch it. No. Ah, they're such a pain to catch without having... There we go. We got one. And as you see, productivity very high. That's what we want. There's another one. There's another one. There we go. Okay, we got all the kamikaze bees. Nice. Perfect. And we'll just leave those slimes there for now. Now, with these kamikaze bees, what you need to do is you need to squish them to get their DNA. Now, a very simple squishing setup is to push a dispenser into a push down piston above a bottler. Now, if you don't know what any of that meant, I don't blame you. Bees aren't the most fun in this pack, in my opinion. Much more fun bees come from the uh, forestry mod, in my opinion. Now, these bees are obviously a lot easier, so some people prefer them, but personally, I'm not a fan. I don't mind doing them. I, I think doing them is really fun. Or sorry, not very fun. They're very useful. And them themselves are very good. Like, these bees are really, really good. However, they aren't the pinnacle of bees. Oh, that's going to take a while. But it is overcharged. I mean, it's the advanced one. So hopefully that doesn't take too long to actually do. It doesn't seem like it will. It's going through pretty fast. The laser beams are zooming down. Hopefully it charges. It should be like five more, ten more seconds, maybe max. Oh, that was actually really fast. Cool. We'll grab the overcharged iron sheets out and we can make our centrifuge. And we'll just set up a very, very, very basic setup for bee production. Now, I also need a baby incubator. Incubator. So it turns out I need a... Now, I know this, obviously, because it's the base vanilla recipe for, I guess, productive bees recipe. But you need a rose bush for the breeding chamber. Now, to get a rose bush in this pack, I was trying to think of dimensions that might have them naturally, say, the Lost Cities dimension or something like that. And it turns out 
there are no cities or no dimensions with them. Now, I could go through the alchemy catalyst route, which is not too bad. It's just some sprinkling glass, living rock, overcharged electrum. But then I have to go through this entire spell gem recipe, which is a spell parchment around a diamond and human chambers. And that seems like a lot of work. Now, I will need this in the future. A much easier way of getting them <laughs> will be going to our city, which is, or I guess, the closest nether village or village. It's probably this one up here. And we'll fly over to this guy. And hopefully, hopefully, there are some birds bushes there. And then if not, we'll go to the next village because I'm going to contemplate making the alchemy catalyst thing, that is. And we are in luck. These guys do indeed have rose bushes at them. So that is very useful. It will give us our rose bush. Where did our broom go? Oh, there it is. That'd be very unfortunate if I lost that. However, we did get our broom. And while I'm here, I'm going to collect some more living rock because it won't hurt. Might need it in the future. Probably not, though, because we can get... I don't remember what we need the living rock for, but I feel like it's already null and void and we don't need it anymore. But we have the living rock now anyways. And we have made some upgrade bases down at the bottom of our base here, which is just simply put into the program laser the same sequence you had set up to make the space plane blocks so now that that's already made it's really easy to go ahead and make the brooding incubator which is the baby one i think it's baby right oh no yeah it's baby okay and that means we need comb blocks which i should be able to make four of them easily like so make ourselves one of these and we'll get a breeding chamber and that is done now the only thing i need left is the breeding chamber oh gene indexer this guy right here which is requires a crafting table very very easy so that is all you need you need these five blocks and i guess you need a piston as well all you need are these six blocks i guess correction and probably a lever as well a lever will help and obviously some bottles which i have been collecting from my mob farm so we have plenty of those and well i'll set up a quick quick demonstration of this guy and i am going to use this section over here just because this does require power and I, it doesn't need to be seen by anyone like it's not a permanent thing and i do want another phytogenic insulator for this guy so i can have infinite flowers so it constantly produces. However, I will set this up and we'll be back once I have. So here we have the basic setup. Now this can be a little more condensed. However, this is the entire setup to make perfect bee genes infinitely. Well, semi-infinitely. Well, infinitely, once you have A2, I guess. But for now, it'll be manually filled. However, we have a breeding chamber here, which takes two parents and flowers, and it will produce a bee. You can upgrade it with speed upgrades, and yeah, well, it requires a bit of power. This will send the bee into the baby incubator, which requires honey treats for them to grow. They will grow up and then be spit into this dispenser. This dispenser will be pushed into a push-down piston, with a bottler underneath here we can remove this one we don't need it and down here we have our spruce shore with bottles pushing upwards into our bottler you need the bottler here filled with bottles otherwise this guy won't work here we have a powered centrifuge now i will put once again power into this thing as well as a item collector directly on top of it which you can set radiuses up so we'll have a nice setup so we won't have picking up random items however the filter on it does not work for centrifuge genes However, the genes will pop out here. Once the power centrifuge is done, it will spit them out into this gene indexer, which we also need another lever for, and it will index genes and will have them piped out eventually into a chest with a logistical sorter to only pipe out the 100% ones. However, without pipes, this is simply what it looks like. Now, obviously, you can condense this more. You can put the incubator up here. Same with this guy. You can put it above, and you can have it vertically done. But horizontal space, vertical space, you're still going to need a decent amount of room for all this you can turn it to the side however you want to do it you're going to need these blocks here now it's only five machines a dispenser and a piston as well as some cable pipes a chest or two and some item pipes but that is all you're going to need and to show it off what i'm going to do is throw my adults in here and we won't be using sturdy cages we'll be using non-sturdy cages that is and as you see these pop out squish bee material which is really cool now what we do with this is we put inside our powered centrifuge now obviously this guy isn't powered yet so i'll grab some cables and we'll see what this can do oh my goodness i'm on half a heart <laughs> not ideal however this guy doesn't need power i'm not sure why i tried connecting it and oh my goodness it's finally raining this is unironically the first time it's rained since i set up the bees and that was like i don't know 45 minutes ago maybe but these guys here finally powered and i can throw my bottled centrifuge in here and i do need item pipes like i said 
and we'll do it simply like this. Do a configurator to pull the items out and we will get our genes. Now, obviously temper hostile, we're never gonna use that. Endurance weak, once again, never gonna use. Behavior diurnal, we don't really care. Weather tolerance, none, not great. But productivity, very high. It's 44%, so that's actually really good. We got 44% for one gene. This will automatically mix them. So as you see, it's doing it right now. And now we have 90% very productive. So we got a 44% one and a 46% one. So we got a 90% and then this will combine into 100%, no matter what it was. Obviously it won't give any leftover or anything, but now we have one 100% productivity. So that's why I said we'll probably need four of them or sort of six of them. However, hopefully I don't need another, another one. These will, well, sorry, they will uh, hopefully give us 100% productivity. Let's see what we have on this guy, 88. That should be it. That should be 200%, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have two very high productivities, which is great. And what this means is I want to connect, combine those 200% on two different bees because normally it will take a 50% chance of each parent and make a baby. So if the parent's genes are two very high genes, the baby will always be very high, the productivity. So what we want is two parents with very high, we want two parents with metaternal and two parents with weather tolerance any, and that will always produce a very high gene, a metaternal gene and a weather tolerance any gene, which means we will have infinite 100% of those three genes that can, once again, infinitely produce us the best bees possible. Now, the bee eggs themselves come from different methods, and we'll need to do that for each one. However, I do want to test a bee. I can guarantee you these aren't maternal or whatever yet. However, if we look, it is behavior maternal, and the weather tolerance is none at the moment. However, these guys just need to sit out for a while longer, probably a lot longer, but they will eventually get to weather tolerance any. Their health are still pretty stable, I'm not too worried about that. And once all these guys are at weather tolerance any, we can stick them in our incubators, get to perfect bees, and we'll be good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a mix mash of things. We got our merit crusher behind us. We got the fabrication matrix way back there to get production set on osmium. And we did a bit of bee breeding to get perfect bee genes. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a comment down below if you learned anything or if you'd like to teach me something. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like on the leave a like. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.